This is your first time to the zoo? No, it's the second time. And have you seen Rusty before? Yes. I really don't like his cage too much. I think he should have a bigger home or a bigger environment to move around. He looks too confined right now. Does he look happy? No. He just doesn't look very happy in that little bitty environment. The sky was dark and the moon rose as a large, shining, orange disk in the night sky. I'd never seen it like that before, but I thought the Vogue was probably thick that night, riding in on the Kona winds. Looking back, I think it was an omen of things to come. What is... what is this? Rusty. I was afraid it might happen. Dozens of primates, including orangutans, had escaped from other zoos, and now Rusty. But this is a great story. I think I'll be able to find Rusty. I work as a reporter, a freelance reporter. I've been covering Rusty the orangutan for about six years now. You heard part of the interview I did at the start of the movie. You know, the man commenting on Rusty's cage? It looks like he may be hiding up here in the mountains, but Rusty's map is hard to follow. I hope I can find him. I don't know what Rusty may want to tell me, but I already do know quite a bit about his life. You see, Rusty came here to Honolulu from the mainland. He was rescued from what's called a roadside zoo through the efforts of two government agencies and a determined group of advocates. Roadside zoos are not accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Rusty was at one called the Terry Lou Zoo in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Conditions were horrible there. A Honolulu columnist wrote that Rusty lived like a prisoner in a Soviet gulag. The zoo kept poor records. I doubt anyone knows how many animals lived and died there. The place has since been closed down. It was the job of the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife to perform inspections at this zoo and document violations. The lead biologist told me he thinks Rusty's story is amazing. He considers the case one of the highlights of his career. In January 1997, inspectors with the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife filed a lengthy report on conditions at the Terry Lou Zoo. The inspectors described Rusty's living quarters this way. The orangutan cage can best be described as an isolation tank. An adult male orangutan is housed in a facility consisting of two adjacent rooms constructed of cinder block. The orangutan can observe zoo personnel only through a three inch by two foot slit in the concrete wall. The cage was dirty with feces from several days. No running water is available. No food had been provided that day. Ventilation is unacceptable. The violations included failure to provide an adequate diet, failure to provide housing allowing normal behavioral movements of the species, failure to prevent disease. The New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife declined to renew the Terry Lou Zoo's permits, citing numerous animal welfare and public safety violations. 
Some violations went uncorrected for years, but it wasn't enough to close down the zoo. In order to close the Terry Lou Zoo, homes had to be found for all of the animals. With so many exotic animals needing to be rescued, it was a tremendous task. Rusty was given to OFI, Orangutan Foundation International. The world-renowned organization took Rusty and agreed to build him a permanent home. OFI initially housed Rusty on a temporary basis at the Honolulu Zoo. He arrived in 1997, only supposed to stay at the zoo for a few months. OFI planned to build Rusty a sanctuary on about 28 acres of land in the Panaeva Rainforest on the Big Island. The sanctuary would house up to 20 orangutans and Rusty would be the first resident. OFI would pay only $10 a year to lease the land, and the state agreed to contribute nearly a million dollars to the cause. Rusty would finally be able to climb trees and live in a more natural setting. They were supposed to complete the rainforest sanctuary by the end of 1998, but it was never built. As OFI delayed construction, the Honolulu Zoo kept having to extend Rusty's stay. I know zoo management wasn't happy about that because they housed Rusty in an old 1950s style cage. The zoo had plans to demolish the cage and build an aviary in its place, but that couldn't be done until Rusty left. Many people, Kama'aina and visitors, saw how sad Rusty looked in his cage and publicly expressed disapproval. That reflected poorly on the zoo, and zoo director Ken Redmond threatened to give Rusty the boot if OFI didn't begin sanctuary construction soon. Rusty found a home on the Big Island, but it wasn't the Panaeva Rainforest. Under pressure from the zoo, OFI tried to house Rusty at Parker Ranch after its sanctuary plans failed to materialize. Parker Ranch lets hunters shoot and kill wild pigs, goats, and even cattle. I remember reading those plans and thinking that Parker Ranch seemed like a poor substitute for a sanctuary. But even this plan was not meant to be. Parker Ranch said it needed time to gain community support for an orangutan facility. But after nearly six years, Rusty had already overstayed his temporary visit at the Honolulu Zoo. Strapped for time, OFI tried to relocate Rusty back to the mainland. He would fly back to the East Coast this time to the Center for Orangutan and Chimpanzee Conservation in Florida. But this idea was also abandoned after a number of people expressed concerns about how a 5,000-mile flight might affect Rusty's health. By then, what was to have been only a few months' stay turned into years, and it looked like Rusty would never get his rainforest sanctuary. Instead of living in the Panaeva rainforest, Rusty's fate turned to Kualoa Ranch, OFI struck a deal with the ranch, where Rusty was to join several exotic caged animals. The Kualoa Ranch facility is not accredited. The Hawaii State Department of Agriculture approved Rusty to live there. Kualoa Ranch owner John Morgan described the facility not as a zoo, but a cattle ranch with lots of recreational activities. Rusty was to live next to an ostrich in a 10 by 18 foot chain link cage until a building violation put a snag in the Kualoa Ranch plans. Construction of new buildings and structures in Honolulu requires a building permit with few exceptions. Mr. Morgan said on broadcast news he didn't believe a permit was necessary for a couple of chain link fences and the head of OFI said she had not understood the full rules and regulations. Kualoa Ranch and OFI were cited in the violation. The average orangutan is about four to seven times as strong as an adult male human. The Honolulu Zoo's mammal specialist told the Hawaii Agriculture Department that the cage was adequate to hold Rusty, even though there was no building permit. But when the USDA inspected it, federal agents deemed the Kualoa facility unfit to securely hold a 275-pound orangutan. The city planning and permitting director facilitated efforts to house Rusty at Kualoa through behind-the-scenes meetings with members of OFI and Kualoa Ranch. Other city agencies assisted in the effort, providing unofficial use of city resources, including employees, equipment, and money. It was obvious to me there were flaws in the whole process, right down to the size of the cage and its structural integrity, all built without permits. 
A Honolulu zookeeper recently made this comment about the cage at Kualoa. When the big island thing fell through, they, they built the small. But that cage wasn't much bigger than the one we had here. Honest to God, I don't think it would have held him. People were asking, what if the chain link cage collapses or a pole breaks and Rusty gets out? When Tyke the elephant escaped from a circus in Honolulu a few years ago, she was shot and killed in the streets. It seemed to me the way the Kualoa Ranch plans were being handled, it could also lead to problems and end tragically. Rusty was born in 1980 at the Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle. Rusty was an animal no one wanted, not even his own mother. She didn't accept him and neither did the Woodland Park Zoo. The collection manager at the Woodland Park Zoo emailed the Honolulu Zoo in October 2002. A reporter had asked to see their disposition records for animals sent to non-accredited institutions. He specifically mentioned Rusty and the Terry Lou Zoo. Rusty is not a purebred orangutan. The Seattle Zoo got rid of him. Rusty ended up at the roadside zoo, living in a small, concrete block enclosure. That was very unnatural because in the wild, orangutans live high up in the forest canopy. They rarely descend to the forest floor. Orangutans are endangered and they are found only in Borneo and Sumatra, where the weather is hot and humid. But it snowed at the New Jersey Zoo during the winter and sometimes they ran out of heating oil. The inspector told me he received a tip that Rusty was without heat in sub-freezing temperatures. Rusty's drinking water had frozen solid. Things were bad for Rusty, but there were other animals at the roadside zoo who also suffered from dangerous and filthy living conditions. The New Jersey Fish and Wildlife inspectors documented numerous violations. During our inspection, the pygmy hippo was observed to have cracking and peeling on the skin of his back. During inclement and cold weather, zoo owner Harold Kafka said the hippo is confined to his house, a stone structure which is barely large enough to allow the animal to turn around. No light was provided. The hippo was locked inside for days at a time, and his skin needed to be checked by a veterinarian. The flamingo enclosure consisted of an outside area with a wading pool and a six foot by six foot shed for shelter. The roof of the shed is five feet at its highest point. Because of the icy conditions outside, the four flamingos were locked inside the shed. A small, dirty window allowed no light to enter. The floor of the cage was two inches deep in damp, wet bedding and excrement. The zoo housed two adult mountain lions, two adult jaguars, an adult and juvenile tiger, an African lion, and Himalayan black bear in cages constructed of chain link fencing with concrete floors. Mr. Kafka has been cited in the past for gaps in the fence and for leaving gates unlocked at various times. On December 25th, 1996, a nine month old jaguar was killed by the adult male jaguar. A zookeeper was bitten and hospitalized during the incident. The total collapse of the cage wall indicates the cages, which are of advanced age, have deteriorated past the point of safety. We observed rusted wires used to fasten the chain link fencing to the cage frames. When we questioned him, Mr. Kafka seemed unaware of the safety implications resulting from this incident. The USDA revoked the owner's exhibitor's license due to lack of veterinary care, repeated non-compliance with Animal Welfare Act regulations, animal escapes, and incidents of animals being killed by other animals within the zoo. It's getting late. It's gonna be dark soon. I'd really like to find Rusty before then. There's just one more place I want to check. Rust Rusty, are you in here? Paula, sit down. I need to talk to you. Glad I found you. Why did you escape? Until right now, I've never lived free. 
I was born in a cage. I survived a New Jersey roadside zoo. They mistreated me and the other animals. I've waited six years for a rainforest sanctuary in a cage at the Honolulu Zoo. And another roadside zoo is where they're sending me next. I've been locked up all my life, so I busted out. I don't know how the news is reporting it, but I'm not a fugitive. I'm a refugee. A sanctuary is trees and an open space. <laughs> I guess my owner's idea is a 10 by 18 foot cage at a cattle ranch. Am I too ugly? I know humans don't like mixed breeds. Is that the problem? Scientists say we orangutans share 97% of our DNA with humans. The humans say they only want what's best for me. Why don't they go to the cattle ranch and let me go to the rainforest? Have you ever been in jail? No. That's how I feel about living in a cage. It's worse than jail. It's solitary confinement. I can't go anywhere. I can only look out at the world through a metal fence. And I'm always alone. I won't go back to that cage. And I won't go to another roadside zoo. Orangutan means man of the forest. How would I know what it's like to live in a forest? I escaped because I had to do something. I thought maybe somebody could help me. You've written lots of news stories about me. I want you to tell people why I escaped. I will tell them and we'll see if they listen. I hope you'll get your sanctuary someday. It's hard for me even to imagine what it is to live free. I don't know if I dare dream it, but I still hold on to the idea of freedom. The story you've just seen contains fantasy scenes of Rusty's zoo escape and his interview with a reporter. It's based on actual events in Rusty's life. Fortunately, Rusty did not end up at another roadside zoo. Legal actions were filed, and the owner of Kualoa Ranch decided Rusty would not be transferred there. Rusty never got his long-promised sanctuary in the Panaeva Rainforest. OFI and the city built a new enclosure for Rusty at the Honolulu Zoo. OFI was in charge of the construction management. In May 2005, the Honolulu City Council unanimously approved a plan that shifted responsibility for building Rusty's new home from OFI to the Honolulu Zoo Society. Zoo Society President Gary Sloven said of OFI, they haven't shown themselves to be reliable. After nine years in the small cage, Rusty is now living in his new enclosure at the Honolulu Zoo, reported to be 20 times larger than his old cage. And Rusty is no longer alone. He has a companion named Violet, who arrived from San Diego in December 2005. It isn't the Hawaiian rainforest, but Rusty now seems much happier. We hope he lives long and enjoys his life. No doubt, he's earned it. Thank mm -hmm. you.